First, businessman Matthew Ng was the first Australian to be transferred back to this country under a prisoner exchange deal with China. He's now serving in a Sydney jail the 11 and a half year sentence for fraud and bribery imposed on him by a Chinese court in 2011. After five and a half years in prison, Matthew Ng still maintains his innocence. He claims he was the victim of judicial corruption following a bitter dispute with a state-owned company over assets worth tens of millions of dollars. Well, Matthew Ng's lawyer describes his client as Australia's first Chinese political prisoner. He's calling on the Attorney General, George Brandis, to use his power within the transfer treaty with China to release him. Kerry Brewster has the story. Matthew was jailed by the Chinese government about five, five and a half years ago. He got transferred to Australia about 18 months ago. Um, he's been jailed for some things which I think are very unjust. And uh, I'm just going to try and provide him some support. And I'm just uh, going to go and try and help him. David Marquard is going inside Sydney's Silverwater Jail to see his old university friend, Matthew Ung. A fair description of Matthew can be as Australia's first Chinese political prisoner. Because on any fair description of a political prisoner, that is a subject of a state-imposed sanction whereby your liberty is denied for circumstances that would not constitute a crime on any reasonable test. Matthew falls within that category. When I write to the Attorney General's Department and I write to Justice Keenan, and I, you, you get a, a form letter back which in effect says, thank you for your letter, but we're not doing anything. You know, that, that, that's how I read it. Um, you know, it, it, it's very hard to accept that when you think this is, when you think that wrongs have been done here and they've got the clear capacity and ability and capability and legal right to fix it, and they're not, it just doesn't seem right. Matthew Ung had a Masters of Business Administration from New South Wales University, when in the late 1990s he headed back to his homeland with his wife and their growing family. His dream was to build a travel business in the communist state's booming economy. Matthew started a travel company called ET China with a vision of growing that into essentially an online travel business. Think of the flight centre in southern China. A decade later, Matthew Ung's travel business was about to massively expand. Matthew had successfully acquired a majority interest in this uh, southern Chinese company called GZL through the state sale process. Had increased in value, had put it up for um, uh, injection into, uh, say, a London listed vehicle. So he's on the cusp of great success in allowing, in creating a company that was then to essentially attract a Western investor to have a platform in southern China. At that point, with an increased value, the minority shareholder said, I want my 54% back. Matthew Ung's wife, Nikki, says her husband was determined to stay in control. He thought he could succeed. Yes. Using the uh, Western thinking and Western strategies, that's not going to work. Yeah. If you want to do business in China, you have to play by their rules. Um, you can't bring your Western mentality set to apply in China. Do you see anything illegal in what Matthew was doing at the time? Very, it was all perfectly above board. These were public tender sales. These were sales scrutinised by big four accounting firms. Major Western investors were involved. Uh, the uh, Western travel company Keone itself had lawyers scrutinising all the transactions. This was no backroom deal. These were public acquisitions consciously uh, on a public tender by the Chinese state. This was Matthew building a business which, as I say, was a public process uh, in accordance with Chinese law at the time. And yet we have a circumstance where at the point when uh, on the cusp of great success and obvious increase in value, it was taken from him. It was um, almost dinner time and uh, he was coming back. When he reached the car park of our apartment, um, he rang me asking me to come down and take his stuff. Okay, which I did. And I saw 
eight um, ununiformed policemen um, surrounding him. So he was um, just passing me his, his briefcase and asked me to call the uh, Consul General. And then off he goes in the van and never came back. Matthew Ung was tried in a closed court in southern China. The allegations against Matthew were basically fraud and bribery. But the fraud was borrowing from a subsidiary company and paying it back. Anywhere in the Western world, that's not fraudulent misappropriation. That's it's how not, you grow your company. That's how you grow your company. Nor is it bribery to put a senior executive of the company that you've acquired on your board. You need the talent of the executives of the companies you're acquiring. That's not bribery. But that's what the allegation, that was the allegation in China, and that was, is what Matthew was found guilty of. The Australian was sentenced to 11 and a half years in prison. His property was expropriated. 18 upwards people in a people in a very small room with one with one toilet, which which is not which is not waterborne. Um, and there's a little half wall. There's only a little half wall which separates you. And Matthew just said, you know, everybody knows everything about everybody. He has witnessed um, attacks. He has witnessed a murder intent in jail. He's you know he's been subject to violence himself. Um, so the conditions were awful. It's really harsh. There's a moment I broke down and cried, but tears won't solve anything. So I have to be strong and um, take good care of my kids and not let anything um, hurt them. But for Isabella, Matthew Ung's 14-year-old daughter from his first marriage, the stress of her father's ordeal proved fatal. She just can't stop crying, learning that um, dad has been taken away uh, in jail. And I think that's how the problem starts. She couldn't cope. Suffering from anorexia, Isabella grew steadily weaker. She died the following year in a hospital intensive care unit. It's very personal and it's, it's very hard for them to deal with. So. So, but my perception from afar is that it was very, very tough. Australia's diplomatic efforts to help Matthew Ung finally paid off. In November 2014, after four years in jail, he became the first person to be transferred back to Australia under a bilateral prisoner exchange treaty. Matthew is very, very grateful to the Rudd Gillard government for the work that they did and Francis Adamson was, uh, was the um, um, ambassador at the time and they, there is no doubt that they, they put in a huge effort to get him out and he is, he is without question very grateful. Matthew Ung was sent to this low security jail in the New South Wales Hunter Valley. For Nikki, who had spent several years struggling to raise three young children alone, there was hope at last. Me and my kids are very happy that um, he's been transferred back here. I hope that he could be released earlier so that he can, back, he can uh, get back to his um, normal life and be with the kids uh, in their growing up. I was the first one of, of that group of old uni friends to go and see him. And so we gave each other a big hug. And I said to him, Matthew, look, I have to say this up front, you know, I, I'm really sorry to hear about your daughter. And you could see his whole persona just changed, his eyes, you know, you could see the tragedy in his eyes. He felt very vulnerable. So I, I offered to take his children up two days after Christmas to go and see him because his wife, Nikki, was not able to at that, at that point. Um, so my daughter uh, came and joined me and I took his three kids and so we drove up to the Hunter Valley. And uh, honestly, it, it nearly broke my heart watching him give them a hug as, as, he, as we walked up. You know, he, was, he, he didn't cry, but he was clearly just very emotional, gave them each a very big hug. But for the past 18 months, Matthew Ung has remained behind bars. He and his supporters want to know why. Australia's Prisoner Exchange Act gives the Attorney General the power to adapt a sentence to Australian law. The legislation is clear that it allows the Minister to adapt Matthew's sentence. 
And that's all that Matthew asks for, is a fair hearing on adapting the sentence. He felt very crushed by the whole process um, of him being innocent but not being believed. I think, I think, you know, I th I think you've got, you, if the Attorney General and the government had believed he was innocent and they had the, the opportunity to release him, um, it seemed to be, it seems inconceivable to him that they would not release him. The rough proxy of what a white collar fraud would be in Australia is a typical sentence of four or five years with a custodial period of 18 months. Matthew has now served four years in China and now close to 18 months further in Australia. It's Matthew's contention that a fair interpretation of that adaptation process would mean that Matthew should be released now. Now the family's circumstances have taken yet another turn for the worse. Nikki Ung is seriously ill. Matthew, who was granted a transfer to Sydney's Silverwater Jail to be closer to his wife and children, is struggling to cope, according to his friend David Marquard. He was not in a very good space. His wife has been hospitalised recently and uh, is not very mobile and uh, so he's very stressed about looking after his children. You can see the tears welling up in his eyes, you can see the pressure is that he's under. He's a uh, pressure is that he's under. He's uh, continually trying to keep, you know, bottle down the emotions because he's, he's feeling the pain and the stress. Matthew just thinks that there is uh, no reason for him to be left, uh, kept in jail anymore. Um, his message is that and any encouragement he can get towards getting early release and getting his life back um, would be much appreciated. Well, late today we received a new statement from the Justice Minister's office. It says the Australian government's policy is to apply the sentence imposed on the prisoner in the sentencing country in order to ensure the transfer scheme remains viable for future cases. But it goes on to say the government is aware of Mr Ung's personal circumstances. His application for early release on licence due to these personal circumstances is being given careful consideration.